Yeah. I don't know about you, but even even watching here and not out there, you get excited. Absolutely. All right, one minute, 40 seconds away from launch. Everything continuing to count down. No issues with the rocket. Again, we're going to see some of those umbilical towers separate from the vehicle. When the second one separates, that means you're only 15 seconds away from liftoff. And those engines actually fire for quite a while, it seems, before you actually take off. Can you feel like that first fire, and then can you feel when you kind of leap off? Yeah, you definitely can. It's not as aggressive as what I've heard a shuttle launch is like, but you can hear those engines start up, and then when they go up to 80%, you can feel the rumble in the rocket. I actually thought we were at liftoff at 80%, and my commander was laughing at me, and he said, no, about two or three more seconds, and then boom, you're underway, and you know it's a kick in the pants when you go. It's like, Reed, no, we're still here. All right. One minute away. All right, still getting good calls. The vehicle now on internal power. There's that first umbilical tep separating away. Pretty soon we'll have auto sequence start. At this point, the ground propellant feeds, so all the fuel flow into the rocket has cut off. Are under 30 seconds. Auto sequence initiated. Uh, and there you can see the engine starting to fire, ramping up. The second umbilical tower already separated. 80% and liftoff. Drew Foisel, Oleg Artemiev, and Ricky Arnold taking off on their way to the International Space Station. Getting a great view of those first stage engines as they light up the night sky. That first stage delivering over 930,000 pounds of thrust. seconds so far since liftoff getting good calls that the stages are performing nominally or normally. Looking very bright here on camera. I can tell you when you see these at night, it's almost, it's like looking at the sun. It almost hurts your eyes, but you can't tear your eyes away from it. And yes, we are seeing you on camera one, green. Fifty seconds since liftoff, everything still nominal or normal. So use rocket doing its job, all of the parameters or the uh, data points for its trajectory looking good, continuing to rocket across the night sky. So we're 70 seconds over a minute and 10 seconds into the flight, the vehicle already traveling at over 1,100 miles per hour. Ninety seconds into flight. So again, this first stage going to continue firing until just before the two-minute mark. First, we'll hear the escape tower being jettisoned, and then following that, those strap-on boosters, those four liquid-fueled boosters on the first stage will be jettisoned. We should hopefully get a good view of that uh, here on the video, as it is a very crystal clear night. View inside the cabin, the crew still doing good. And getting confirmation from the visiting vehicle officer here in Houston. Good first stage separation, and the escape tower has been jettisoned. That drops away at an altitude of about 28 statute miles. The Soyuz traveling at over 3,300 miles an hour. Thumbs up from the crew. All right, now we'll get this animation. You can see the core stage uh, also serving as the second stage. And so two minutes, 30 seconds into flight. What's it like inside that capsule right now? Uh, you you get some good G-forces. You know first stage was good. Uh, right there with the launch shroud jettison, that's a very dynamic event. You can see out the windows. And uh, you got thrust behind you. You're pushed back in your seat, and that makes you smile. And we confirm, we also uh, confirm launch shroud jettison. 180 seconds into flight. 
Everything's still looking great for the rocket. Over 48 miles in altitude already. Traveling at a speed of about 4,700 miles per hour. That core stage, and there we go. Getting our first view of uh, Ricky Arnold there in the right seat. All smiles looking like. And we can see his zero G indicator just over his shoulder there. The hula girl for Soyuz call sign Hawaii. Copy, everything is fine on board. We're feeling excellent. Also. This core stage is about 56 feet in length, 13 and a half feet in diameter. It provides between 178,000 and 222,000 pounds of thrust. That depending on where they are uh, in the out or in the Earth's um, atmosphere, and that continues for three minutes and 28 seconds of operation. Once this second stage has done its job, it'll cut off, and we'll see the third stage begin to ignite, and then the second stage will cut away and then drop back down to Earth. And that's also why, if you look at this animation just before that orange section kind of in the middle of the rocket there's a lattice like structure and that allows the third stage engine to fire before that second stage drops away but four minutes 20 seconds since liftoff everything's still continuing to go great with the soyuz getting good performance calls uh, from the teams over in the russian mission control center in koryov prior to second stage separation copy by canoe lead we're standing by And so while they continue to fly uphill, I've always I've always wanted to ask when we get those in cabin views, it almost looks boring for the crew in there. Like it it it, it almost looks like there's not a whole lot going on, but it's got it's gotta feel completely different when you're sitting in that seat. It feels completely different when you're in that seat. There is nothing boring about this phase of spaceflight at all. This is about as exciting as it comes. Uh landing is a maybe a bit more interesting, uh, but this is as exciting as it comes. Copy. All right, well, all the crew inside. Again, NASA astronauts Drew Foisel and Ricky Arnold and Oleg Artemiev, the Soyuz commander, there in the center seat. Over five minutes and 23 seconds into their flight. Keep an eye on all of those different uh, talismans hanging over them. Once that third stage cuts off, you should see those start to float, and then that'll be kind of the, your, your first view of life and microgravity. Uh, excellent, in, and in celebration mood. Copy. 340 seconds into flight. Copy. And the uh, um, combustion chamber pressure is nominal. Copy. And so at this point, the second stage booster is already cut away. That coming at an altitude of about 105 miles, now being propelled by that single engine of the third stage, providing 67,000 pounds of thrust. It's going to continue to burn for four minutes and two seconds until that eight minute and 45 second post-launch mark, at which point it will cut away and separate, and the spacecraft will be in orbit. Everything on board is fine. Dan, everybody's always asking what it feels like inside when you launch. And in the lower right of this uh, schematic here, you can see it almost looks like a zigzag pattern there, uh, a jigsaw pattern. But it, that's the G-load that the crew is feeling. That's, that's what's pushing them back in their seat. So you can see first stage goes up to 4G. And then when first stage cuts out, there's that huge vertical drop off. And then second stage builds up as the fuel weight reduces. And then there's a another vertical drop off. And now they're they're painting a new line on third stage, so they're they're not even at two times uh, Earth's gravity right now. So they're just gently being pushed back in their seat, just enough to know that that engine is running. Those are pretty quick drop-offs. They're instantaneous drop-offs, so you definitely feel those. Those are very dynamic phases of, of the ascent. All right, well, still getting good calls, normal performance of this third stage engine. We're about seven and a half minutes into the flight, velocity approaching 13,500 miles an hour. Again, once that third stage is done with its job, the Soyuz will separate, and then they'll execute a series of commands, all pre-programmed in, to prepare the Soyuz to fly around in outer space. And those will allow uh, all the onboard computers to deploy the, um, the solar arrays, which you can see the blue cells folded up alongside the body and also a bunch of antennas. 
but everything's still looking great. We should have about 40 seconds until that third stage cutoff. Phenomenal on board, and uh, uh, the crew mood is festive. And uh, you have 30 seconds uh, uh, prior to third stage separation. Copy. 500 seconds into flight, everything is nominal. Five hundred and ten seconds into flight. Five hundred and twenty uh, seconds into flight. Please uh, be prepared for GECA three command. We are ready. And there we see that bit of a jolt. You can see the talisman starting to float, and I think they're in outer space now. Welcome to low Earth orbit. Congratulations with the successful launch and insertion into orbit. Have an excellent flight. flight. Good luck. And we have confirmation the third stage has shut down and separated. Hawaii, Moscow. And getting confirmation from the visiting vehicle officer, all solar arrays and antennas have been deployed. So a healthy Soyuz spacecraft now in orbit. Three crew members, Drew Foistel, Ricky Arnold, and Oleg Artemiev, ready to chase down the International Space Station. So their first taste of microgravity has got to be a feeling of relief, accomplishment, excitement, wonder. I can't imagine what's going through your head when you're in that moment right there. I think you nailed it, Dan. Uh, relief and, and extreme excitement. And then you see the crew, they're not taking any time to look outside right now, Dan. They're, they're making sure their vehicle is safe to continue the mission. They're checking the pressurization systems. They were just closing some oxygen valves and they're gonna go through about a 30 minute process now of making sure that they are not leaking any of that precious atmosphere out into the vacuum of space. So this is actually a very busy time for the crew. You can see Oleg and Drew there are kind of working in concert at the same time to make sure all of their systems look great. All right, well, since it's a two-day flight for them, so with the six-hour flight, do you get a chance to kind of relax and get out of your suit, or are you in that seat the entire time? I never left that seat. Your commander gets out of the seat for just a few seconds, but uh, the the left and right seaters there, uh, in this case it'd be Drew and Ricky, they're not, they wouldn't leave their seat. But in this two-day profile, um, once they check their vehicle and everything looks good, they'll do a few orbital adjustment burns today, and then they actually have a chance to go to sleep up there. All right, well, c control and monitoring of the vehicle gonna be overseen from this room that you're seeing right here, the Russian Mission Control Center just outside of Moscow. And again, they're, uh, relaying all the data over to us here in Mission Control Houston. Again, we heard good confirmation of solar array and antenna deploy. So a healthy Soyuz spacecraft in orbit, ready to begin its chase down of the International Space Station. The AKG was not initiated uh, when we pressed the initiation button. Well, I'm standing by for the first IPE uh, measurement. First measurement, this is Hawaii 2. Uh, time is uh, 20. Uh, as the pressure is 794. Uh, BO pressure is 02. Uh, BO pressure is 800. Uh, it, it is 855. Uh, copy Hawaii. And now. Uh, All right, well, now that we have a crew safely in orbit, we wanted to take a couple moments, answer a few more Twitter questions. Again, if you have any, you can always use the hashtag AskNASA to send them along. This one comes from Manish Kumar Mishra, who wanted to know, how does the research that you're doing in space help prepare to send humans to Mars and beyond? Well, it's all about just learning how to live and work up there. And then these trips that we will take to Mars, uh, I would say in the near future, uh, they're, they're going to be years long kind of trips, six months out, spend maybe a year or two on the surface and six months back. And we just want to know what happens to the human body in all that time. Radiation, your bones change, your muscle changes, your 
blood changes, your eyesight changes, your heart changes, everything changes. And so, everything changes. And, and then how do we build safer vehicles? What kind of materials do we use, et cetera, et cetera. So we're looking, every day we're looking at all of those things. Even just something as simple as the water that we drink. How do we recycle all of that water? Uh, those systems are on board the space station. How do we keep the oxygen level right in the atmosphere? Um, all of that, we need to learn and lower our orbit before we head out. And the space station's been up there for almost 20 years. And, uh, and these things, they're really coming into focus. So we're, we're really getting prepared to, to head out on a deeper space journey. All right. Our next one comes from Elise, a little bit of the lighter side. Can the crew watch TV, listen to the radio? What do you guys do for fun up there? In the Soyuz, you cannot. Oh. Uh, you, you have your two crewmates <laughs> in the Earth, and that should keep Bring you entertained. Uh, but for the six months uh, that you're on the space station, you get one channel of TV, and then you can request a few shows that are uplinked uh, a couple times a week. So you actually stay pretty well pretty well entertained. But the, by far, the thing you want to watch the most when you're up there is the Earth below you. It's always magical. It's always got something new for you to look at. And uh, that really captures your fascination. All right, this next one from Marsha Pohl. So this will be different depending on how your flight goes, but how long was it before you got to sleep on your launch day? So for you, it was different because for, you For me, it was different, and it, it took a while. And that first night on the space station, it, you're in this crazy foreign world. The Soyuz is a tiny little spacecraft, so once they get their onboard systems checked out and uh, and everything is looking good, it's it's pretty, from what I hear, it's pretty easy to go to sleep in the, in the Soyuz. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would say it's, uh, they're only a few hours away from being able to take that first nap. All right. Okay. And then how do the astronauts typically spend their time when they're traveling towards the station? So on a two day, what are they kind of getting into? Because it is kind of a small space, but what can they do? Well, they, they can listen to music, they can tell jokes to each other, they can read books if they brought any. Most crews are going to take something to keep them occupied. But mm -hmm. then from time to time, they're going to be checking in with Moscow Mission Control. They're going to be doing orbital correction burns. They're going to be verifying that their spacecraft is safe. So in, in between some, some periods of downtime, they also have some pretty intense work to do. All right, well, we got time for one more. This one's from Elise, and she wanted to know what it feels like to be in the rocket during launch. So if you had to pick kind of one thing that really stands out to you when you're on a rocket for a launch, what, what really kind of, what, what do you never forget? Power. Power. You never forget that power. I mean, you are being hurled from zero miles an hour to 17,000 miles an hour in eight and a half minutes. That's pretty There's quick. There's a lot of power. It's a good zero to 60 time. All right. Well, again, thanks for sending in your questions using the hashtag AskNASA. We'll continue to answer them on social media and any other time we do these kind of broadcasts, and hopefully anytime I can drag Reed on here with me. So keep on sending those in. Uh, we always love to hear from you guys. All right. Well, with the Soyuz now in orbit, it's going to arrive at the International Space Station in just two days. So we will have a couple of updates for you real quick on how you can watch all of that coming up. All right, well, immediately following today's broadcast, we're going to be bringing you launch replays from a bunch of the different cameras that were out there in Baikonur to watch that rocket lift off the pad. That'll be coming up right next. And then later today at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, we'll do a video file of the post-launch, giving you all the best views of the launch itself. And then any other uh, interviews we got with some folks there uh, on the ground in Baikonur to watch today's events. And then we will be back with our live coverage of this mission on Friday, March 23rd. And we'll be starting off at 2 p.m., so another great time of the day to, to watch a, a Soyuz flying through space. We'll come on the air at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern for docking coverage. They're scheduled to dock at 2.41 p.m. Central. Following that, they'll dock. They'll spend a couple of hours doing some leak checks and then get the hatches open. Hatch opening coverage will start at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. The hatch opening is scheduled to come about 35 minutes later. Then the crew members will be able to go on board, greet their new crew members in their new home for the next six months, and then we'll close with that final video file of the all of the highlights from that day's events. Copy uh, regarding thermal testing. 
Все верно. Корабль выводу на орбиту, параметры орбиты All right, well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to watch these three humans blast off the face of planet Earth. I want to thank Reed Wiseman, NASA astronaut, for joining me here today on console. Reed, it's been a pleasure. Hope you had some fun. Any chance I get to come to Mission Control, I'm here for you. All right, we'll bring you back. All right, well, again, stick around. We're going to be bringing you replays of that fantastic night launch. So stick around, see that rocket lift off a few more times. Thanks again for joining us today. Come back on Friday to watch them dock to the International Space Station. But for now, that'll do it for us. This is Mission Control Houston.